This week on Know You're Wrong, winter has finally arrived. We're talking the grand finale of season six of Game of Thrones. Stick around. Welcome to Know You're Wrong. I'm Michael Kolb, joined with Joey Skaggs, Brody Buckingham. We're Big Kid Studios, and today we're talking the finale. Winter has come. How did you feel? Oh, it was so good. It was so good. I got goosebumps like 12 different times. Uh, it's definitely my favorite finale of the whole series. Yeah. It was, like I think we talked about this last week, episode nine is usually the big episode, and then episode 10 is always a little a letdown. A little nice. lackluster. Yeah. A little yeah. letdown. I feel like we had yeah. a great episode, great episode, great episode. They started, they started kind of slow this season, and then ended on such a strong note. I mean, I really feel like there was only one episode where I was like, that kind of was boring. And that was only one out of the whole season. And then that boring episode was totally ratified with, uh, what is it, gratifying? (laughs) With, uh, you know, a next episode, which made the boring stuff make a lot of sense and have real importance. Yeah, this one was just so good. I think they threw out... It's kind of feel like, you know, we've been, we've put all this time into this show and like we've been expecting, like waiting for all these surprises and cool stuff, good stuff to finally happen to our characters. And this one is just like, bam, like this is all the stuff you've been waiting for. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's just a lot of good stuff. Like, you know, Tyrion, it's good stuff with Tyrion, you know, getting, you know, the hand of the king. Yeah. Um, there was, uh, and of the you know, queen. Yeah, the right. hand of the queen. <laughs> and then, you know, John's, a lot of stuff with Jon Snow. And it was just like, yeah. So, like, I, it was a good, like, mostly good feeling episode. I have to mark another one up for me real quick. Arya did come back for this finale. Arya did come back. That was Like the, I said. That was the one time I was wrong. That's this No. I called. I, I think we're, I've got a good little tally here now, going for this, now. For this week, that was the one, the one time I was wrong about this, the finale and predictions. Because I, I predicted most of what happened this week I, I felt really good about it and i totally called the ending shot with danny oh, on the road yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, the I, dragons I, yeah i was uh-huh. like because that's how they end most of the seasons and that's and that's how i knew it was going to end and i was upset by that but it was still cool i was like has a lot of ships and all those right dragons are huge before we get into breaking down the show the uh, episode let's announce our winner oh, oh yeah. yeah congratulations to jared mccown you won yourself a little pop <laughs> dragon. This is Viserion, one of uh, you know Daenerys's dragons. So we'll be contacting you, getting your info, and we'll send that your way. Um, I think we had a pretty good turnout. I want to thank everybody for you know yeah. sharing and commenting. Um, it's pretty good. I think we're probably going to do some more in the future. Definitely. So. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So congratulations, Jared. Yeah. Great thank comments. You. Yeah. All right. We're gonna we're gonna get right into it just like they got right into it. Yeah, they did. That beautiful opening cinematic sequence as they showed everyone kind of getting dressed and the difference between Cersei getting dressed and Marjorie getting dressed and and the, the king uh, uh, Timon yeah. uh, uh, Tommen getting dressed and then the high sparrow the high sparrow pulling on his robe yeah. uh, or rags yeah. But that was beautiful, and then they led up to the wildfire explosion or the Sept of Baylor. I feel I sad. I feel sad. I thought Marjorie might have been able yeah, to. Yeah, like she knew Cersei. She knew her enemy. Yeah, I was. I did not. For some reason, I thought Marjorie was going to stay alive. I thought she had some more stuff up her sleeve. Um, I thought she had some kind of secret. Guys, I know she told her grandmother to like go home and get out, and she gave her that, you know. A picture of that rose, but I was like, so she's got to have something. And but she did know, like she was like, right. we have to get she out of here. She called it. Yeah, she called. It. She's like, we have to get out of here. She even then, like got out of her disguise of being yeah. a follower and was like, stop talking about the yeah, gods. Screw Let's the gods. Just, yeah. yeah, we're it's all just, gonna like, die. Yeah. and they did. Yeah. Well, see, and that was my hope was not that they would die. My hope was that like last minute the sparrow would be like, yeah, and most of those people would die, but like those two would make it out because. What happened in that moment, I, I could see so much coming from it later mm-hmm. that would really affect things. And I was just kind of, it was an epic way to end them, but it, for me it was kind of a letdown in that they were ended. How, yeah. about, how about the little birds? The yeah, little dude, birds. That was crazy. That was so savage. savage. Like children of the corn stuff yeah, going on. It just, was like, what? Oh my goodness, I did not, 
I don't know. They were going to be that crazy. Like what kind of manipulation? Yeah, they were. Setup? Do you have to have done to those children? Right. To prepare them for that? Probably. I don't know. They're probably hungry. They're like, here, you want some food, some candy? Like, yeah. Here, just. Well, I mean, they're they're like you know street kids, so they're used to this torture and torment, and they're used to seeing that stuff all the time. So for them, it probably wasn't that that difficult. Yeah. But it was crazy how easy it seemed for them. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, see you later. And they killed. the Grand Master, mm-hmm. I, don't, I just forget his name, but that really old guy. Mm-hmm. And I that was, was brutal. Yeah, that was that was rough. Yeah. And and what about Lancel? The way they set up Lancel, uh, he got hamstrung in the dark by the little boy, and mm. then he crawls and he sees the wildfire, and you see how they that did it. That was a with cool the, reveal. Like it was like you see this little tiny faint glow, uh-huh, and, and, and then it just gets like, brighter. Yeah. It's like oh my god. Was it just me, or did it look like alien blood coming out of those boxes? Yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> that's the first thought about that. I was like, that's wildfire. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 I know. But it was just, it was I was funny. like, there's so much. Yeah. There was, like, a lot more than I expected. Well, and with seeing that much, I didn't think it was just going to be that building she was going to destroy. I figured she was wiping out the city. Mm-hmm. I was well, like, oh, my gosh. I mean, she's really taking everyone out. She probably out. took out a good block or two. Yeah. That least. bell that, that bell comes down and, and hits the person. And those like, people, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow, they did a great job. That was, was awesome filming. Yeah, and the music in that whole opening sequence, that was just oh, like just so... the piano. Like, yeah. That yeah. piano that came in. It was oh. just so, like, dark. It was, it was amazing. I loved it. All right, what about... We went from there to Jamie and Walter Frey. And it was a discussion with uh, Walter Frey comparing the Freys to the Lannisters after that big toast of how the He was Freys basically were... comparing himself to Jamie. Yeah. yeah. Saying, like, look, we're the same guy now. We're both like Kingslayers. Kingslayers. Uh, Jamie was like, mm. no. He's like, you do realize no one's afraid of you. Yeah. They're afraid of me. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, like, really an ego crusher, and yeah. I loved it. If we have to constantly come back, and every time they take the castle from what's, me, what's the point? Right, what's yeah. the point? What's the point? Yeah. But something yeah. interesting, too, is they go straight to Jamie right after his son dies. Yeah. So you're seeing him before he knows. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, we need to go to that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I, I kind of didn't see it coming until it was too late. Like, right. They, had left, they left the shot on the window as Tom walks off, and I was like, they're going to do something with this window. I right. knew it. Like, as soon as he walked off and stayed in the window, I was like, oh, he's going to yeah. kill himself. And but then, was it just me when when he interacted with the mountain? I was like, is he seriously about to get killed by the mountain? <laughs> like I, I had that I moment. That I was hurts. like, she's gonna wipe her own son out. Yeah. And it was just like, but then when he was back standing in the window, I was like, so he's still alive. Yeah. But the mountain was just keeping. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That was just freaky. Like I just yeah. don't like people like killing themselves, watching people like commit suicide. Well, obviously, but when like I'm talking like, about like a movie and TV shows, it just looks weird. But he just stood there and just, yeah. When he was like a run and jump, it was just a. Whoop. Just felt. I was like, oh, like it yeah. just it shocked me. And I, we were watching. We go, oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my god, that was amazing. I mean, it wasn't amazing, but it was. It was, but it was just, intense. It, yeah, it, was it, very it intense. caught me off guard. I was like, yeah, did not expect. And that. now Cersei does everything for her children. Right. What is that going to change for her? What kind of? Well, before and I, it, this will change a lot. But what was crazy for me was you do you think of her being a, a, a mother, an ultimate mother. Yeah. You're like no matter what, she's always as much as she's obsessed with herself. She's always a little more obsessed with her kids. Yeah. And the fact that she kind of caused her son's death. Yeah. Well, and I mean, didn't she, have much of a reaction to yeah. it. I was well, like, well, I mean, she what? kept him there because she didn't want him to blow him up. Right. But, but, but because think, she wasn't there yeah, for him, at the same him, time, he just went crazy. Know, she did kind of feel betrayed by him. But she had already known. Like last season, we saw that prophecy with the witch. She right. Said, you know, yeah. None of your kids will survive. They're all yeah. gonna die. Right. And so now I think. It sucks. Like she's been trying to avoid that prophecy her whole life, and that's why she's trying to avoid Marjorie, get rid of her. But now, I think that it's already done. It's like a burden has lifted off her shoulders, and now she has nothing to lose. Yeah. It's almost like she realized that this was going to happen yeah. and kind of accepted it, I guess. She's like, still, if, you expected if my kid's going to die, more. she's like, I'm going to make sure I'm on the throne by the time yeah, that they yeah, do yeah. that. So now, I guess that's all she has to lose. She's going to keep the power, but now she's like, I don't have any, you have nothing. Yeah, it's like, anything. what's her motivation now, like you were saying? Like, now, what is she fighting does for? Does she marry Jaime? The Targaryens did it, one brother and sister. She's a queen. She makes the rules. She makes yeah, the laws. She knew what she wants. Does she marry her own brother? Well, but then you saw Jamie's face when she yeah. was taking the throne. Yeah. I, I, obviously, I think he still is in love with his sister, but I don't think he could do that now because of what's happened. He's a little, I think he'll blame her for it, and that'll kind of yeah. yeah well, he, he lost the, his, well, he lost the kids. death of their son over right, her. Yeah, head. exactly. Like, will that will he finally be freed of his twisted obsession for her? Yeah, I don't know. Then that if he does, then that's 
makes room for him and Brienne. To, you well, know. and it also <laughs> would make sense it's that together. he would separate from her because this season they've talked so much about how every woman in the world is, a, is in love with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it would kind of make sense that now that he's separated from her, like emotionally, mm -hmm. that he would find someone else. And that would probably play a big part in the next season. Yeah. But we don't know if that's the case yet. I, I'm looking right. forward to finding out if yeah. if that's how Jamie reacts. Mm -hmm. Will that develop his character further? Because we've seen this character slowly move closer and closer to being a more whole character right. and less like selfishly motivated. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, he's always. Evil. I think he's always been that kind of good character. Of course, when we first introduced him, um, I was listening to some podcast with him. But he was like, when he first saved me, he was like. I'm doing, a, I did a terrible thing. He was like, just imagine anything that you've done in your life, mm -hmm. that, imagine the worst thing that you've done in your life, and now imagine somebody like watching a story of you, and that's where, that's the first yeah. thing they see about you, is like, why well, oh. So, but then like we learn more, you know, that we learn <laughs> why he killed the king, you know, we kind of learn that he, I mean, he does love his sister, which is weird, but I mean, it's not like, you know, he's still got heart, like he cares about something. And in so. this world, it's not that bizarre. Yeah. And, but the thing too is, I honestly believe if Jamie wasn't a Lannister and if he wasn't connected by family to these characters, Jamie would be one of those guys like John that we're like always rooting for. Mm -hmm. yeah. But because he's a Lannister, he he's a good guy on the wrong side is kind of the yeah. best way to put it. Yeah. Well, okay. What about uh, Cersei and the Septum when she uh, unleashes the Mountain on her former captor and torturer? Oh yes. That part of me, I was. I felt good for Cersei. I mean, I hate Cersei. She's a terrible person. But part of me, I was like, I was like, I get it. Like, if you have held captive and stuff. And, yeah. You know, it's kind of a vengeance yeah. moment. It's like, good, you, you, you're getting at least something back. But my whole thing too is that's it, it is a weird scenario because you you don't like you know the sparrows and you don't like the Lannisters. So it's not like she's torturing somebody that we're on the side of. So there is a little bit of ability to kind of root for her yeah but you're also like but i don't want her getting what she wants yeah. but so it's like a juggling thing of emotions yeah, right there imagine that it was pretty awesome yeah then we go to sam and gilly arriving at the citadel and i really wanted more time there they just gave us a little taste a little tease this yeah. is what we're in for i next was season. i was I, know, I was happy with what they gave us because i mean there wasn't this is the finale like there was a lot of stuff for us to get to a lot of cool epic stuff and that was it was cool, like seeing the building and seeing like the mirrors with the you know the lights bouncing off and all the chandeliers. Like, and yeah, stuff, I was yeah. like, I was like, it looked it looked super cool. So, but yeah, I was I didn't think we needed too much. We could have left it out, but I like they teased it a little bit, showing us what's going to come up in the next. Yeah, two it just seasons. it's just a filler to like set yeah. you up for later. Yeah. yeah. And then we had <laughs> Davos confronting Melisandre in front of Jon Snow. And John lets her off by exiling her. Yes. I'm betting we see her again with a different face. Um, she is old as hell, but looks young with her necklace, right? So, so you think she can like get I'm a thinking different face? She might be able to like change her appearance, and we'll see her show back up as a different priestess, the Lord of Light. She since she was sent right by the Lord of Light. It'll be a whole thing, but it'll really be her, and. Then we won't know that right away, but then right. we'll discover it. Yeah. It'll be a whole thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know unless unless we end up finding out that like the Lord of the Light and the Faceless God and the Old Gods, they're all the same God. Then, yeah. Then technically, then yeah, she could wear any face. But I think we'll definitely see her again. I know that she'll pop up. She'll be in alliance with somebody. But I think she'll probably try to, you know, prove her worth to Jon Snow again, or try to make it up because. You know, there's this prophecy about, um, you know, the one true, the true king or whatever, the right. prince, or I forgot, I forgot exactly what it was, but she always thought it was Stannis, and now there's a lot of people who think that it's Jon Snow, and so she's going to want to help Jon Snow regardless, so she's going to have to find a way to, you know. Well, and like, when we were watching it, the one thing I was impressed with, and I talked to you about it, was how uh, Jon's always trying to make the good decision, He's not trying to make selfish decisions. Right. So she makes it very clear that John will be way better off if he keeps her around. And and it was one of those like his middle ground was I'm gonna banish you. Yeah. So he isn't he isn't you. he isn't taking a side necessarily as much as he's 
he's doing the good thing. He's giving her mercy, and he's also kind of trying to give the guy some justice. But it was it was one of those things where he he could have made the selfish choice and been like, no, she's staying here. And he was like, I I care more about this than yeah. being good. Than he knows being he's powerful. smart enough to know like she is gonna be useful in the battle against the White right. Walkers. It's not but, like he ignores that fact. Yeah, yeah. But you know, Davos really needed something, and so, right. yeah, you can't stay here. So, props to Jon Snow. And I'd also like to point out that you know we realized you know. It's, Daenerys now got this big army, and Jon Snow has got all these people that follow him, the King of the North, which is awesome. Um, I don't know, I don't think they're gonna battle each other, but I think at some point they they would be perfect to like get together and rule together, because we've seen, we've talked about, yeah. you know, because Daenerys is not a ruler, she's a conqueror. Well, and she did make a very big point about how she's going to make peace by marriage, yeah. and it's like, Maybe, maybe that's foreshadowing. Maybe this. she can marry her nephew John Snow, John <laughs> Targaryen. I mean, she's had relations with closer, so <laughs> keep Targaryens pure. That's my new. Right. That's my, I'm gonna start a hashtag, GoFundMe hashtag Keep Targaryens pure. You know, start that. <laughs> but no, but John is a good leader. But as yeah. we saw in the last episode, he's not a good fighter. Like he he lets well, he's get not away. a good conqueror. Not a good or, yeah, yeah, but he's just not a good like he's tactical not a good tactician. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but well, she is. He so has been, yeah. he's proven that he's a good tactician. He what his emotions control yeah. his decisions and yeah. that was the that was a mistake that he made in the battle of the bastards was his emotions conquered ruled his decisions whereas when john has the opportunity to uh displace his emotions like when he fought at the wall when he yeah. fought at hard home he he made tactical decisions he made sound decisions well and, yeah and okay. when he made when he made those decisions they worked and people survived right situations where they should have lost yeah but when john snow's family was involved and all of a sudden He's, he's emotional. He all logic goes. That's like his kryptonite. But like yeah. he wasn't he wasn't really directing anybody else during those fights. Maybe at the wall, at the battle at the wall, he did kind of. Yeah, but no, I mean, and hard was, home, hard home. He he commanded every made every decision. Like when to retreat. Yeah. How many people to take? Like get on the boats. Who's uh, gonna it was mostly, but they were just ambushed. Like he did. There was no. But like, he was plan. making those on he the spot. He was mostly just yeah, fighting. Yeah, yeah. He could have like, stayed and tried lights, to fight to the death. Those white but, yeah, ones, which no. is what the crows would have done. But no, like obviously, you know, you can't kill him. Like cause that's the only thing. Like yeah, retreat. Let's go. But right. he was still fighting. Like that's yeah. why he was so good because he's he's a good fighter. But yeah. he's just not a good. You can't make everyone Tactician. fight. But this yeah. is all. Well, not this, but what we were talking about is after he became king. But that meeting, when they decide that he's going to be king, that little girl just owned that. Before we go there, hold on, before we go there, we have Sansa and Jon having a a -a tete-a-tete. Right. And my question is, does Sansa want to rule? Does she have a motivation to rule? Because she kind of denied it. She she wanted to give it to Jon. Right. Uh, And then she had the opportunity again with Littlefinger. And again, she she shut Littlefinger down. But well, yeah. But it's like we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> but that's a little but if Sansa wants to rule, like she has a claim. Right. And I think that right and, now she's content to sit next to John. But we haven't seen any desire from her to rule. She just wanted revenge. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, she is a Stark, so she does have claim to it. But she acknowledges like you're just as much as a Stark as I am. Right. And she was like, and she knows that. Except she's. He's not. He's not. Well, he's, <laughs> well, he's half Stark, yeah. but he's not half Stark because of the same father. Yeah, he, he's yeah. half Stark because his mother is her aunt. Right, but yeah. they brought that up a lot in that meeting later about how he's got the blood of him, and it's like, ah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. He does, yeah, because little Leona. Right. Brought up, he's got the blood of Ned Stark running through his veins. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like that's a, they don't nobody really kind knows of. so it's kind of. it's a it's a legitimate yeah. argument now until later. But here's my thought is. Sansa is proving to be really strong and really, really good at being, holding the, the trump card, you know, and, yeah. until she needs it. So I'm almost wondering if John does go down and starts taking over, she might be given the power to just run the North. Like, kind of sit in the throne of the North yeah. while he's actually going down and, and doing the I don't conquering. think John wants to do that. John just is concerned about the North and concerned about the White Right, Walkers. but I mean, it's like we said earlier, John's always trying to put himself in a lesser position and people are always pushing him to do more. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is, I agree. I think John is only concerned about his home and he doesn't care about taking the throne. It's, but because of who he is and how great of a yeah. person he is, 
they're going to just push him to it, no matter yeah. what he and wants. And Littlefinger did not, when they all did declare him as king in the north, you know, he gave that eye to Sansa. And, and she noticed it yeah, real but, well. Yeah, she, she was, was worried. Like, she was worried. Because, I mean, worried. she should be worried. Like, it's Littlefinger. Littlefinger well, how many got ki- Ned Stark captured and ultimately killed. Yeah, and like, how many no- kings of the north have died already? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of a death warrant. Yeah. It's like, you're going to die. Well, yeah, just like what I brother. thought was just mind-blowing was Littlefinger making his move on Sansa. Like, really, he yeah, sold like, her full into marriage on. to Ramsay like, Bolton. <laughs> Did he yeah. really think that, that she would it's forgive just, him that easy? He'd be like, yeah, 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 let's make out. But you got to think, too, Littlefinger's motivation is always power. Mm. So I think to him, he assumes... I think he's motivated by love. But, I mean, he the weird thing is, like, he was, you know, into Catelyn. And, like, he was, like, obsessed over her. And, that, right. you know, he would help her do anything. And he, he went out and told, flat out told Ned Stark. He was like, yeah, I'm still in love with her. The only reason I'm helping you is because I want to help Catelyn. Right. And now, like, for her to have a daughter that's, like, grown up and then still have those hots for... And that's just cool. It's yeah. a Twilight moment. Yeah. Jacob. Like, just imagine, like, daughter. any girlfriend you've ever had and then, like, getting shut down by her, but then, like, whenever years she has later, a daughter... Yeah. You're like, all like, right. Like, 20, 30 years Couldn't later, your you're like, oh, when I'm going to go out... Like, that's weird. That's, yeah, it that's is so weird. creepy. Don't like it. But I don't trust him. But like I was saying, though, I think his motivation is always uh, power-hungry. Yeah. He's always doing that. So to him, that's... That's a big deal where he's like, I want to get as high as I can get, and I want you to go with me. If somebody had told him that, I think he would have gone with them right away. So I think that's what he was hoping. I she think would he's like, I want to get as high as I can get, and not that I want you to come with me, but I need you to take me there. Right. That's why he wants to start. Well, right, but that's what I'm saying yeah. too. Is it's like he used that card because I think in his mind that's a great motivational yeah. moment, and it just she's not that character anymore. I really feel like Tyrion and Littlefinger are opposing energies, like. Uh, Littlefinger is the polar opposite of Tyrion. Yeah. They both kind of have the same tactics and same. Uh, They're real cunning. manipulative, yeah. yeah but they both kind of started at very. I mean, because yeah. started Littlefinger at the bottom, now I'm here. Yeah, Littlefinger <laughs> had nothing, and he's worked his way up. So, I mean, that's. There's something to be said for that. Tyrion, of course, he was a Lannister, he was born into it, but he was kind of, you know. He's an outcast. He's yeah. the black sheep, the yeah. black outcast, so. But, yeah, he's, he's making good for himself now, yeah. too. And now that he's the hand of the queen, I'm just. Oh, man. All right, so we finally visited Dorne again this season, yep. and it was terribly boring. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, no, you're wrong, sir. <laughs> oh, calling you out. It, it, like, it was boring. She's sitting there, she shuts down the little girls, yep. they're having a hard time. No, that was great. I yeah, loved it. That's grandma. Because you've it. seen how, how crazy and like evil these girls can be, yeah. and she's just like, hold on. Yeah. I'm still Shut your mouth. Like, okay, I like that because it was, a little, it was fan service, but it didn't. Propel that story, and then just kind of sat in that for a minute. Well, no, because even in her morning, she's still super strong, and I well, love that about her. Character. And we learned that they're teaming up with, with Daenerys. Yeah, yeah, like uh, Viserys, or Varys shows up, and uh, what's left of the House Tyrell is, is now allying with Daenerys because she wants to crush Cersei. Right. And, okay, I'm cool with that. Still, it was kind of boring. I, I liked it. Wrong. I thought I it was a good I witty was banter. Cool. And I thought it was yeah. great banter, and I thought, you because, know. Because, all right, this is my issue. The lady, and it literally lasted the, like 60 seconds. Yeah, it was the lady such a that's short sitting scene. sitting on the throne in Dorne didn't do or say anything, really. Like, she had, she was just a set piece, basically. Well, okay, so using this scene, how, how, does, how does this scene end, remember? And it was very showing. Up. Right, yeah. and then the fun part, we, we made this comment. He's also on the boat at the end. Yes. So how the heck does he travel back so fast? Okay. Yes, that bug. <laughs> I'm gonna wait for the end. Or right, that bug. I know, but that that's. Happened. He leaves episodes ago. Yeah. Episodes ago, we had this whole little he heart, to heart up, touchy yeah. feely. Oh, he's gonna go get on the boat, go on this trip, and now he's back. In Within time two to scenes, like, he's back. <laughs> like, come I on. Can, I could justify this. Come on. I could justify. Can you teleport? This. Yes. No. <laughs> so he. Okay. Yeah, he left episodes ago, and he met with, um, you know, the girls, like the Sand Snakes and Dorne. So he's been with them, talking with them, and then finally the grandmother shows up, and she's talking to them, and so he's already there waiting for her, so that's why we finally see him. Time is so, fluid in Game of Thrones. And all I'm saying is, like, it takes plenty, it takes long times for them to do anything, to get, to load up the ships, to do stuff. So, I mean, I don't want to sit around, I don't want, you know, I don't want Theon Greyjoy and his sister to show up, and right. then we have to wait another eight episodes because it literally takes the months. The pacing has changed so much. Since the pacing has changed so much. I'm just saying, I think, like, seasons. I think, like, that everybody came back with Varys. Like, I think, you know, 
right from Dorn and you know the Tyrells, whatever's left of them. I think they were also on the I, ship. I don't. Though. I won't actually argue the time. What I don't like though is that there was no description of time. So it's almost like this is just happening. And then you're like, oh, okay. And then when he shows up, it kind of throws you off a little bit. Yeah. It was like if they had done anything to show you how, like, any kind of gradual time well, there. It was just... Bottom line is, I'm tired of waiting for Danny to go to Westro, so I don't care. Like, skip over the people where people are driving back and forth. Like, I'm ready to go. So I was happy with it. All right. On that note, we're gonna take a break. Come back for part two as we keep the discussion going for Game of Thrones season finale, The Winds of Winter. <laughs>